Video reviews, one of our newest weekly traditions here at vidIQ. We're going to be taking a look at your videos that you submit using the forms below. And if you're looking at this and you know exactly how long this video is, that means it's a video and not a live stream. But it's important to note it, it was a live stream, which means you may have missed the chance to submit your channel. Uh, but don't worry. You, there's always next time. We're doing this pretty much every Wednesday, like clockwork at 2 p.m. Eastern. Don't forget to subscribe. And to those of you who are here live, thank you so much. So excited to see your videos. So like I said, the forms are down below. And the way this works is you'll submit your channels. We will be randomly selecting them over the next roughly two hours. And we will be giving you some advice, some advice on your intros, some advice on the production quality, some advice on the edits. Uh, all the things we see and more that we feel like, you know, we could offer some help with. Uh, the goal is to make it so your videos don't have people clicking off of them after they get, you know, a few seconds in, 30 seconds in, a minute in. We want people to stay watching as long as possible because that makes a massive difference when it comes to your video being spread around all of YouTube without you having to do any work. So joining me today for video reviews is Viper. How's it going? What's up, Dan? I got I got a question for you, Dan. Follow me for a minute. Okay. So you're Dan. I'm Viper. You're an executive producer. I'm an executive producer. We both work for VidIQ, which is a YouTube education company. The people here today are on the VidIQ YouTube channel. So in order for them to have uh, their channels looked at, or their, their, channel, their videos, in order for them to have their videos looked at, they have to actually go down to the bottom, fill out a form, right? Yes. And people know that we are a YouTube education company, so... We are reviewing videos as a YouTube education company in the hope that we can somehow help you all uh, discover something about your videos that you're doing good, that you could do better, or just things that you could pick up on. Even if we don't do your particular video, you will learn something in the blockchain today. So I just want to put that out there that we're here to help you all. So hello, yes. you all. How are you all? <laughs> Good, good. So, yeah, we're going to be looking at a lot of different channels today and uh, a lot of different videos today. So uh, there's probably going to be something in here for everybody. Do take notes. Do keep your channel up on a second screen if you have one available. And why don't we go ahead and get started? There are, uh, again, two forms linked down below. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the first person who managed to submit on each form. One form is for non-gaming channels. One form is for gaming channels. So we're going to look at the first non-gaming channel here today it is a short channel for the most part they do uh drawing it looks like really close-up drawing i'm seeing what looks like it could be homer simpson there's a lot of really interesting uh shorts here with a lot of different characters uh, uh, uh quite an array of views across these as well um why don't we go ahead and just check out the to check out the latest one it's doing pretty well uh 17 hours ago it was over a thousand views and we'll see what we can see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll have to mute it just because Shorts does let you add music through their library. So we know it's just music and drawing. And let's see. It looks like they're drawing the eyes of a character. Oh. So that must have been the beginning. It looped there. Okay. First thoughts. So. Okay. Why am I here? Oh. It. That might be my fault. Are you hearing? You're hearing feedback of you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Let me reshare my screen. This happens occasionally. Technical difficulties. Apologies here. Okay. Okay. How about now? Testing. Perfect. Okay. Here we go. All right. Great. Oh, uh, with short editing is so crucial in short because you have to edit for retention more than any other form of content with short and i feel like this person hit that right on the head they were to cut every like what two seconds it seemed like so they were definitely cutting to different uh, angles of the drawing and different things like that so i love the fact that they are trying to keep this engaging for the viewers that this short uh progresses yeah a lot of cuts uh i think visually this is a very interesting short. I like how colorful it is. I like how close up it is because I think as a viewer, if I were to scroll by this on the short shelf, I would want to keep watching because it looks like they definitely have some skill, right? And you can't really see the full picture. So you're kind of waiting for that satisfying moment as the short plays. Like, what are we looking at here? It's just, it just stay zoomed in and stay zoomed in. And it's not until the very end where we get to see what it is you were drawing. And then it loops. And I think it loops in a fun way because I can see people watching this twice. 
What yeah. about you? Oh yeah, that that's the secret sauce of shorts. If you can get it to loop to a point where people like they won't realize they're watching again until they're like right in the middle of the second watch it. That's how you want to do it. Yeah. Uh the strategy of taking one drawing and breaking it off into quadrants and only doing one quadrant for a short seems like a good way, I think, for an art channel, any art channel, to maybe think about how they could take one piece of work and span it over several videos. So that's also an interesting strategy that this channel is implementing here. So they're doing it on a different character this time. Yep. Well done. Yeah. I, in terms of practical advice, I'm trying to think about like what to say here. We can look at upload frequency from a channel audit perspective. Uh, I think uploading multiple shorts in a day is a good thing to do putting them together like just a few hours apart i don't know like you can definitely afford to separate them but maybe you've tried that and you're seeing some really good results here in the last uh you know day with all of these being really close together so i'm wondering maybe if this new test where you're putting things closer together is working better for you or not it's kind of interesting um one other bit of advice i can give you is the characters you're drawing sometimes are really recognizable like Bowser. Uh, and, you know, I, I kind of expect characters like this to pull in more views. Now, in this case, it didn't. But there was one that I saw that got quite a few, I thought. Freddy. Okay, so Five Nights at Freddy's. That one got almost 5,000 views. 23,000 views for uh, this one that just seems to be about a marker. Oh. This is interesting. So I've never seen a marker like this before. Have you? Uh, no, I have not. It starts off with no color, activating my pink Posca marker. And they have to do this to get it to actually like turn pink and start to work. And I'm kind of wondering if you have any other cool little art tools that maybe you take for granted, stuff that you're just used to, that people like us, you know, would see and go, what is this marker? What is this? I kind of feel like that was, that's why this this short in particular got 23,000 views. Uh, it just, it kind of, it's still the same kind of channel, just showing you something a little bit unique. So yeah, uh, overall, I, I think this short strategy is great. I think that uh, this channel will continue to climb up in subscribers. I like that you're letting your shorts loop. You're not you're not doing sub call to actions or anything like that that would distract from the content. It's it's just like you're going to draw something cool. I would encourage you to keep testing different things. Keep playing around with characters and familiar you know faces uh, that that you can draw, and keep playing around with the different art tools that that might be just visually interesting to somebody who especially hasn't maybe like drawn before themselves, like not seriously anyway. Yeah, good start. Well done. Keep going. Keep up the good work. So we'll look at the next uh, channel, which is actually the first gaming channel that managed to submit on our random selection form. And uh, I believe we've seen this channel before. Joe Llama Mama seems really familiar to me. Maybe even from the early days of doing video audits. Is this channel familiar to you? It is not, no. Do you remember this character? I do not. I remember this character. I remember talking about this. Um, maybe this was a maybe this was something we did in Discord one day. Uh, so I think what we'll do. It looks like they do stuff in the game. This is Brawl Stars. Maybe we take a look at the uh, this the second to last video here. The craziest maps in Brawl Stars. I think in terms of title and thumbnail, uh, this video is is made to bring in some new people to the channel. Today, I played your guys' craziest maps, ranging from mini games to architects to hacked maps, and so whatever this is. What is this map? What is this map? Make sure to stay to the end because some of these maps were absolutely insane. This is it's laggy. Oh, what? And if you want to have a chance to be in a future video just like this, come join us stream and subscribe. But let's share out some maps. What the heck? Whoa, this is trippy. Oh my god. Ay! This is the craziest map what the heck yo <laughs> there was nothing i could do so that's 30 seconds uh first thoughts <clears throat> again the editing is top notch man and they're like making all types of cuts 
He explained what he's going to do and why he's doing it. And the other thing that some creators do, but other creators don't do is that he found a way to activate his audience by saying, if you want to be a part of a future video, make sure you watch to the end or whatever, or, or, or no, he said, if you want to be a part of a future video, uh, make sure you come to his stream. Um, so that kind of, uh, that kind of gives the audience some incentives, you know, to, to watch the content and be a part of the community and things like that, because they might be in a future video if they do that. So not a lot of creators do that. So I can appreciate that, that uh, approach as well. Yeah, that was, that was really good. Uh, so definitely gave an incentive for the viewer to stay all the way till the end, which you don't see a whole lot. Um, I, I think the way they introduce their, their llama character in lieu of putting maybe like themselves in the video like instead of a face cam they decided to have this like stock image of a room and then have their character pop up on the screen i think that's totally fine uh it matches like the branding of the channel which is which is cool uh i i think the the music everything definitely good strong edits um so my critique isn't necessarily about the intro it's what happens just after the intro so i think when we get to about here so this is the first submitted map in the game and it's it's obviously just a floor full of spikes big troll moment you know just you know i think this is an appropriate map to show off in a video like this let's just take a quick listen again trippy oh my god Aye. this is the craziest map what the heck yo <laughs> there was nothing i could do i already know some dude is so my critique here is you were so well spoken in like the intro you did a really good job setting up the video during your actual like recording session right like when you were sitting down to play the game the commentary i think is is something you want to be kind of focused on more um i as someone who's played games and done commentary i i know how it can get i know when things get hectic it's hard to think about what to say in the moment you're just kind of reacting in real time this is why people use face cams because I think it it saves them a little bit of trouble. Like they don't, and if they're if they're not saying a whole lot of words, if their vocabulary is small because they're just in panic mode, but their face is telling a story, you can zoom in on their face to see you know the enhanced reaction of the person, not just hearing them, but you can see them too. And I'm not suggesting you put a face cam, but I think what I'm saying with, in my opinion, without one, I think I need a little bit more from you to just stay engaged because. I'm I'm hearing you say, oh my gosh, ha ha ha, this is crazy, this is crazy, but I'm not, that's like, it's kind of like, that's all you're saying about it. I want to, like, I want you to kind of describe where you are, describe to me why it's crazy. This is the part of doing commentary for gaming that I think just takes practice. Um, I, I think, because I, what I'm, I guess Viper, I don't know if you agree, but what I'm saying is I think the intro was really great. I think it was strong. I think it was a good hook the meat of the video after the intro was where i was kind of thinking oh well okay how long is this video going to be um what am i going to get out of it like i start asking myself those questions you know just a little bit later than i normally would yeah and the other thing is that um that that map that he was playing immediately after the intro it was kind of hard to tell what was going on it was like all like spiky and checkery and like you could barely make out what was happening so uh yeah, I don't know if I would include that part in a future video, but uh, yeah. Well, if you do, like, tell us, like, say, oh my gosh, is this just a floor full of spikes? You know, and and make those those. It might sound obvious, but those little observations kind of give people context because I was tr I was struggling too. I'm like, what is what am I looking at? It's a bunch of lights on the floor, and then when the character was taking damage, it it occurred to me, oh, this must be you know spikes on the floor. So, I think it's just doing a better job of practicing to like describe the environment like that's what i was saying when i said why is it crazy you know like say say the words like this is just a floor full of spikes why would you do this like you know put it on the person too like ask them like what are you thinking like who is this for you know was, those funny one-liners uh you know it, that again practice it, it makes perfect it's it's hard to do that in the moment once you practice that skill and get better and better at that you'll realize that these clip montage videos that you do uh, come together a lot easier and you have a lot more quotable moments from the video and those you know those can add to it it looks like what you're doing is streaming and then putting this on youtube which is great uh because i'm looking at the sub goal here and this is normally the kind of overlay you would see while your oh, live stream is going on 
So I'm thinking this was done during live stream and clipped together in, in a YouTube video, which was great. Like, I think you did a good job with an intro repurposing this content. But yeah, there's there's there needs to be, I think, just more commentary practice, which just means making more videos and having more fun. And, you know, it's definitely not a criticism that if I got, I would be like disappointed by it. Be, okay, cool. Do more. Yeah, do more. All we could. All right. So yeah, congrats to you. Uh, I mean, this is not a bad amount of views for how many subscribers you have. You've doubled the amount of views to subscribers here, which is excellent, which that's a testament to your title and thumbnail. Uh, since the last time I saw this channel, I think they're making some really good progress. I, I think things are getting a lot better for them. Just, just a few months ago, they were getting less than a hundred views on their videos, still trying different titles and thumbnails, but, uh, you know, they're starting to kind of like hone in a strategy here, which is great to see. You know, and what you just said makes everything that we do worth it because when you guys listen to us and you take our advice and you go back and you actually apply it to your channel and we see the improvement from you taking our advice, it just makes us feel good and validate what we do here. So I'm glad that you guys are getting value out of these live streams. I am too. And I apologize for my alerts in the background. I will, uh, <laughs> that's technical difficulty number two. I will, I will turn that off. And we will now do the, the thing that everybody's kind of sitting on the edge of their seats waiting for. It's the claw. The claw is here to pick your channels. As I said earlier, there are two forms. One is a non-gaming form. One is a gaming form. Uh, as you can see, they're pretty neck and neck right now. Uh, so the way this works is we just go ahead and we update the claw. I, I typed in 500 earlier. I'm going to change it to, oh, well, it took away my, whatever. Uh, I'm going to change it to about 315 and that'll cover everybody. We'll pick a non-gaming channel, at number 258. And it is that simple. So Zeitgeist History. Let's go ahead, grab their channel link, throw it in. What tab do I want to use? How about this tab here? And they have 508 subscribers. They're doing shorts. They're doing longs. I want to look at one of their shorts and uh, their latest long form video. Uh, I just added that to a list. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Oops. Oops. In the summer of 1857, the U.S. Army undertook their first major experiment with the camels of the unofficial U.S. Army Camel Corps. The Army had purchased Arabian and Bactrian camels from within the Ottoman Empire. Their task was to carry 700 pounds across 850 miles of desert from Camp Verde, Texas to Fort Defiance, Arizona. Their abilities were compared to horses and mules also used in the expedition. At first, the expedition commander wasn't happy with the camels' performance, as they were much slower than the horses and mules, but after about 10 days along the trail, the camels caught up to and passed the horse and mule teams. The expedition was a success. The camels proved they could move more cargo, better, faster, and more efficiently than horse and mule teams. Officials in Washington, D.C., however, lacked enthusiasm and were more concerned with the threat of civil war. When war did come, both the Union and Confederate governments had parts of the herd in their control, but neither did much with them. After the war, the U.S. Army auctioned off the camels, some of which ended up in circuses, others ended up roaming the desert free and wild. Camel sightings in the American Southwest continued into the early 20th century in the summer of 1850 all right um let me just take a look at something real quick uh so that video just got out that, that video was put out four days ago it's 52 views the one before is 1.7k so they get like you know so, some views on these mm -hmm. i have okay there's one that's over 2000 uh before we move on to the long form video what, what are your thoughts on on camels okay so that particular video that we just watched, I kind of feel like it came from a longer, a long form video. Mm -hmm. um, it just felt like the, the way it was cut, the way it was narrated. It just felt like it was part of a longer video that was repurposed for a short. Um, that's the way to do that. But you got to understand that short content is vastly different from long form and how you do them and how you edit them. I felt like that short in particular needed more cut. Uh, the panning from left to right or right to left of the camels was fine, but you need it quicker. It should have been quicker. I feel like there were like 15 seconds in between cut. Probably should be like maybe five seconds between cuts. It was just too long, too drawn out. I was almost getting a little bit bored to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, you got to cut it a little bit quicker. I think yeah, getting a little bit bored is how I was feeling. There was a good point uh, about halfway through the short where it should have ended. I felt like 
like they stopped on like a, a sentence about like them them using the camels and it's not that the information they're giving is bad or uninteresting right. it's i didn't know this and this is this is like legitimately interesting i just think the the way it's being presented in the context of youtube shorts i'm talking yeah. about the shorts player like when you when you click into this thing and you're swiping through all these you got somebody dancing you got a cat you know eating something it shouldn't you you got you know people blowing up balloons and putting confetti in them like you have all this stuff happening in the youtube short space a history video pops up and it's not that it doesn't have a place in that lineup of videos it's just that i think it needs to start with like the most exciting fact about these camels like and and i think the voiceover although it wasn't bad i think it, it could it could try to crank it up a notch and like get us even like even more interested by saying like, did you know this about camels or, you know, something, something interesting. Like I, I bet you never thought of the, a camel as a military animal. Like that's a weird thing to say. What do you mean? You know, just, I think it needed that first sentence that, that bit of intrigue, you know? Yeah. It's like what you're saying, Dan, is that it needed a shot of adrenaline and it didn't. Yes. Have that. Yes. Uh, Cause you got to think about each short you make. Imagine the person who finds it, somebody who's never seen your channel before, just got finished watching a video that was really fast paced, high energy, like high octane. Like there's shorts is great to find like really nutso things happening all over YouTube. And this this feels like you're coming from that point and you're just kind of taking it down a notch now. Like, all right, everyone chill. We're going to learn a little bit about camels and history. And, you know, that's certainly fine there's a, a fine video on its own but i think in the context of the short shelf it needed a little like you said a shot in the arm um and i also think it could have been half as long yes i think you put a lot of information in there when i think you could do a four second or, or 10 second short that gives one piece of very very interesting information and you could then have a lot a lot of shorts you know you you've uh, with 10 seconds you have enough time to give a really interesting fact and a little bit of context, whatever order works for each short. But interesting fact, a little bit of context, boom, short over, person can skip ahead to the next one. And since they watched it all the way through, or maybe they watched it more than once because it was like, uh, excuse me, and they had to like hear that again, you know, YouTube's going to be like, great, noted. Um, Zeitgeist History gave this person a short they enjoyed. They even hit the like button. This is great. I'm going to make sure that more Zeitgeist History shorts make it into this person's short scrolling experience. So yeah, so, yeah, go ahead. Oh, question for you. So we know that short could be anywhere from 60 seconds or less, but I kind of feel like the best shorts are anywhere between 15 and 30 seconds. What are your thoughts? I, I agree. I would go like shorter is always better. Uh, I'm getting to a point uh, in my personal life where if I have a short that's 40 seconds, I start to question a lot of things about it just for the fact that it's 40 seconds it could be the best 40 seconds of content i've ever done but i know as a shorts viewer stuff that really like gets me is the stuff that's short 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 you know like not no 40 seconds like they they put one punchy funny thing in that in that short and so i get more and more and more ruthless with my edits now because i want to see can i take a 15 second short and get it down to 10 seconds and then can i take that 10 second short and get it down to seven seconds like that's that's how i'm trying to be now but don't yeah i think generally speaking using that full minute like that's that's a risk i did see one short actually yesterday uh that did manage to use the full minute uh it felt like the full minute to great effect it told a complete story beginning middle and end um i don't know if i can find it cole's plunger Let's see. Yes. Okay. Let's watch this for a second and you'll see what I mean. Like if you're going to do a short that, you know, is to spans a full minute, I think this is what it should be like. Oh, it's muted. Card I couldn't hit their entire sign with Basically Cole's over social media bet bet him that you couldn't you can't hit our sign blindfolded in under 10 minutes. We'll throw in a find another gift card um to a random family member at the store. So that's the that's the setup. That's the beginning of the video. That's the hook. And he's explaining the hook. 
plungers in less than 10 minutes blindfolded. I went to the closest Kohl's to see if the manager would let me try the challenge. I do these plunger trick shots and Kohl's commented asking me to do it within 10 minutes blindfolded, the whole thing. So I wanted to know if I could do that here. Yes. Okay, cool. Awesome. The manager, Julia, decided she wanted to time it. Her so now we had the, we had the hook. Now we have like the, the setup, getting ready to actually like do the challenge. I'm going to mute it for a second because I want to react to this properly. So they, you know, the, the guy has some assistance. He's getting ready to actually start making the shots and then begins throwing the plungers. This is like the, the middle portion of the video. Watch out. I'm feeling the pressure because I'm eating up the clock and I really want to give this gift card to a random family. We just lost the O. Oh, okay. Oh, you suck. And now I have to hit the O again. But this is when legends are made. How much time do we have left? One minute? We need to bring you up. Ah! Okay. Right here, right here. There. Deep breaths. Yeah. You suck it! Right as the timer ends, hits the last plunger. Could that have been staged? Maybe. Doesn't matter. Like the, the music was changing throughout the short. You have suspense building the entire time. And then right at that last second, boom, makes the shot. And then the video of course ends with the payoff. They're, they get a chance to celebrate and the manager awards the gift card. He walks blindfolded to find a family to give it to. And so there you go. Like to me, I feel like I just watched a Mr. Beast style video that could have been 12 minutes long and I saw it, the whole thing in one minute. How the hell could you stage that? Then you can't stage that. <laughs> you, you can like, so you add in the, t the, the iPhone timer sound going off. Yeah. It, just in post. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, like yeah. it, I'm saying it could have been staged in that way, but it doesn't matter. Like the point is it was entertaining, you know, at the end oh, of the yeah. day, they they built up that suspense and it was that that moment that cliche moment in every movie where the timer ticks down with one second left and they manage to like snip the right wire so the bomb doesn't explode like i think that the masterful storytelling and this is why i'm so enthused about shorts because i think it can help people tell better and better stories like when i saw that short i did not have a, a, an urgency to swipe away once like there nothing nothing in my mind told me to swipe away because it was just the the pressure was building the entire time so just an example of what you can do with shorts if you're going to use that full minute yeah that was pretty good uh so i know we went off on a bit of a tangent there but i really like shorts what can i say uh, let's look at their long form video here. Old Abe, the original Screaming Eagle. Made famous in America during the Battle of the Bulge in 1944-45, and later from the HBO miniseries Band of Brothers, the Screaming Eagles of the 101st Airborne Division have been a source of pride in American military history. But the story of the Screaming Eagles doesn't begin in the 1940s, but rather the 1860s, with a company of Union soldiers from Wisconsin during the American Civil War. In the spring of 1861, Agamawege also known as Chief Sk This is 30 seconds. See, and that's what I was talking about earlier. That intro is much better suited for a long-form video. Now, I can appreciate that because the video is longer, and you're setting up the proper storyline, and you're going to tell your story now, and I thought it was really good. That does not work on a short form video. You can't do that. But for that, brilliant. I love it. Mm -hmm. I think I think this, yeah, this type of content is much better suited for long form video. Uh, the fact that they didn't say, hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm so-and-so. It, it just kind of like starts going, you know. Uh, you can tell you're going to get a lot of educational value throughout the whole thing. Um, there are a few things I could suggest, but it might not fit the vibe. So you can take these or leave them. Um, I think the beginning for me needed a bit of music. Uh, I, I heard it kick up finally after the intro, like you, you do start to set the tone a little bit, but I think some like old school military, some somber, but like some old school military music in the background that plenty of that out there, uh, that you can use would have been interesting for like just the beginning portions. It's just very quiet. You know, that, that that's one thing that stood out to me. The other thing that stood out to me was the fact that even though it's about the screaming Eagle, um, I mean, there's the eagle on the thumbnail, and it says the origin of the screaming eagle. Um, I, I would have liked to see an eagle, I guess. I know it sounds very si silly and simple, but I, I guess I would have liked to see an eagle, even if, like, like right here, is this is this footage or just a picture? A regular source of food was chicken. So, yeah, I I think footage even if it's more recent footage of an eagle like doing its thing that that would have been interesting and you were you're still talking over it 
um, different things to kind of set the tone. This video reminded me of the types of videos they would show in history class, um, which is not, I'm not trying to say that to sound insulting or anything like that. My, my memory of history class was kind of like, uh, you know, this is going to be a long video. And I got, I guess I got that feeling just because I didn't, I didn't have any music. It was just very, very quiet. It was very, so I think there's some things you could do to kind of, um, you know, just some more elements you could pull in to, to help hold the audience's interest. Uh, but certainly very credible, really well sourced in terms of like how much you have in here on your edit. It's very, very impressive. All the old footage. Um, September 19th. Th see, this should have been the opening shot, by the way. <laughs> like an eagle just looking like an eagle. Like this is cool, you know. Um, not that not that these photos aren't. I just think you could have used, you know, I, it could have used that at the beginning. It, like it almost makes you wonder if the title and thumbnail, like, oh, did these pay off for me when I clicked on it? It's it's kind of that with the audience. Mm -hmm. So those are just some suggestions. Um, other than that, if I'm to put my channel audit hat on for a moment, uh, I would I would be thinking about the titles and thumbnails. I think there's some really good information in here, but it would for me be about like I feel like I would have to be searching for the term you know, old Abe or screaming Eagle or something like that. Like I would have to, something in my life would need to spark an interest in this topic for me to come find you. Is there something you can do with your titles and thumbnails to make me who's not thinking about this interested in this topic apropos of nothing? Cause right now you're waiting on each of your viewers to have an external influence and then come find you. That makes sense? Yes. So it's not an easy question to answer. It's not an easy thing to tackle, but it can be done. And it's it's something that I would be kind of working on as you continue to develop your channel. Like, okay, like I know I care about this and I know there is an audience for, for this out there, you know, and I like, I like learning cool historical facts, but I would never have searched for this video in a million years. You know what I mean? So there's maybe you could have given me a cool fact or something in the title and thumbnail rather than just kind of a a very button down presentation, you know? Yeah, the, the, inter the interesting thing about YouTube is that we always hear them say that they uh, they don't they don't put your videos in front of people. They put the videos in front of people that they feel like the person would like to watch next. And a lot of that watching a lot, but some of that has to do with content that the viewer is searching for. And it also has to do with things that, that the algorithm feel like the viewer might like. But if your video is so obscure that it can't really be put into a bucket that is understandable by the robot or just people in general, then you're not going to get very far with getting it in front of the right people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, best of luck. And there's definitely some videos here that are outliers. Uh, I definitely would not be discouraged by what we're saying about shorts at all because you are getting some really good views on some of these especially. Uh, we just want to help you get even more. So yeah, congrats on your channel. A lot of really well-researched stuff here. All right, we're gonna take a look at the first gaming channel now that's, uh, you know, the second gaming channel, I guess, of the day. Uh, 320 is what we're at now. So I'll just go ahead and bump this preemptively to like 340. All right, 339, come on. You you gotta be kidding me, Claw. You're trolling me now. Claw trolling you, literally. <laughs> All right, fine, we're going to 320. Uh, the very last person. Oh, it's Samurai JB. I believe, I could be wrong about this, but I believe they're in Vidaiki Max. Maybe. Is this the right channel? I don't know. Um, all right. We're, we're, we'll put that aside for now. We'll talk about Vidaiki Max in a little bit. So, it is a gaming channel. This grounded mod explodes you every 10 seconds. Can you play No Man's Sky without touching the ground? Okay, some interesting challenge aspect videos here. Can you play No Man's Sky only in the sky? Um, <laughs> only sky, that's great. Uh, let's look at the latest video. I took the most dangerous weapon in Grounded and made it explode every 10 seconds. This mod just takes out a bomb every 10 seconds and drops it on the ground. Okay, we have 100 bombs in our inventory. Let's see how far we can get. Okay, as you can see, Wow! Wait, let's try that again. Am I just dead? Am I just... No, not that part yet. What is this guy doing? Wait, let's just drop a bomb on him. And by the way, 
These bombs are the only weapons I can use. <laughs> one last thing. Rule number one with explosives. When you ignite the fuse, get out of the way. Wait, we have to run. Oh my god. Wow. Okay. That so 40 seconds in. What do you think? Okay. <clears throat> This isn't going to be a nitpick from me. Um, this might not apply to most people that are watching the content, but the audio is not synced up with what he's saying. Like the words in the in the, in the actual sound aren't synced, and that really like <laughs> that oh. really I noticed, and it drove me off. Could that be me? Could that could just be the art I connection? I don't know because it's bad, so let I don't me, know if it's you. <laughs> let me watch it for a second. Seconds. This mod just takes out a bomb every 10 seconds and drops it on the ground. Okay, we have 100 bombs in our inventory. Let's see how far we can get. Okay. I... To me, the lip sync, when when it goes from voiceover to actual reaction, it, it, it's lined up perfectly. You're, you're saying it's lagging behind for you? It's not lined up perfectly. Not at all. Oh, like, okay. His mouth is moving when there's no sound. So that, it's definitely not lined up. That yeah. happened back here. Mm -hmm. So that's true back here, but, but watch... I know we're just like diagnosing tech issues all day. Like, like watch here. What is this okay. Wait, let's just drop a bomb on him. And by the way, so do, do you see? You saw it that time. Yeah, that that time it was lined up. Okay, so yeah, he's what he's doing, and this is a but interesting call out from you. This is what he's doing is he's going from live reaction to voiceover. Oh, okay. So in those moments where he's hey. doing that, because that's a really good point. When he's doing the voiceover, the camera should disappear. Okay. That way, you don't. You're not. You know what I mean. You're not distracted by it. Mm -mm. No. 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 This doesn't work. This does not work for me. If you're gonna do a voiceover, do a voiceover. If you're gonna do live reaction, do live reaction. Don't try to intermittent because then you get stuff like this and it just looks. It looks jilted, choppy, and it just does not look right. May choose one or choose the other. You all that, but maybe Dan feels differently. But I'm. But me for me, I no. Don't make voiceover and live reaction. Don't do it. No. I. I like it. I've seen a lot of people do it effectively. I think I think you would feel differently if, you know, if we were looking at a different example. But I, I can't think of one right now. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably my favorite person to go to, which would be Farzi. But I, I, it would probably take me too long to find, you know, a video that does this exactly how I'm thinking about it. But I've definitely seen gaming channels do this because what the, basically the process of recording this video would be: I'm going to sit down and just record it and record my real time reactions. But then I need to tell a story. So I need to do some voiceover to kind of set up my reactions. So I get what they're doing, but I think there's a way to present it where it's not distracting to the viewer. And to me, that's at least removing your camera when you're doing the parts where you're like, oh, by the way, one more rule, you know, because while they were doing the, re the reacting part, they weren't thinking about, oh, this has to be part of my intro. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it, we can agree to disagree on it. It's a, it's a technique I've definitely seen done that works sometimes it just you have to you know be aware of how it looks to the viewer because what they're doing again I, this is a streamer overlay they're a new tip new tipper so i think they're taking clips from a stream and then again re repurposing it into youtube content so that's that's probably why we got it this way mm. but uh yeah no interesting call out for sure i was gonna say um it in, with the voiceover, it kind of felt like you were interrupting yourself a lot at the beginning. So it's like one more thing and one more thing and one more thing. <laughs> like I kept like feeling like, okay, I'm into the video. Oh, okay, nope, we're stopping again. We still got to learn a little bit more. I'm into the video. Oh, we're stopping again. I got to learn a little bit more about the context. So I, I guess I would have broken that up a little bit more. And I, I, I don't know what kind of raw footage you had access to to make that work, but... These bombs are the only weapons I can use. Wow, okay, that radius is actually really big. So we actually like need to run. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Okay, I take that. All right. Okay, just drop the bomb there. Oh my God, that was painful. Okay. The other thing for me is that it's really hard to follow what's happening. I don't know if you're feeling that, but... Yes, yeah, I am feeling it. So... When when you're streaming and things are happening fast, sometimes it's hard to stop your camera on it for a bit because you know what's happening and the audience that's been in your stream the whole time probably knows what's happening. But me as a viewer coming into this, 
after the fact i'm struggling to keep up like because there's a lot of fast cuts like we're going from scene to scene to scene and i don't have a chance to get my bearings before you're cutting away again so in order to fix that i think some some zoom ins some slow-mo moments some things you can do just slow down your footage a little bit use arrows or circles or something to like point to things you know a great example is when you said "Ooh, that hurt watch this oh wow oh nice okay i take that all right okay just i rebound too much there. sorry oh so oh that hurt so the bomb exploded but i had to look for your health bar like you knew it hurt but i i'm like <laughs> wait what am i so zoom in on the health bar in those moments like I think when you do stuff like this, it's it's going to take more editing than you're doing now because I'm I'm feeling a bit confused and knowing it's a live stream thanks to the banner here, I kind of feel like I missed out on on you know the intended experience, if that makes sense. Um, there's also software you can use to I I don't know if OBS proper has it, but I know Streamlabs OBS had it. You can put all these overlays, your webcam, all the stuff, but you can record. I think OBS Studio has this now. You can actually just record the gameplay, your mic and the desktop sounds, and everything could be on like a separate track. And that way, when you put it on YouTube, you don't have this banner here. It doesn't feel like a live stream. Like you can really trick people into thinking this is, nope, I made this for you guys. You know, no live streams here. Uh, <laughs> when people sense that there was, that, that the video is missing some context, I, I think it gets to a point where they might they might get distracted and they might not watch the whole thing. So those are some thoughts on on the edits there. I do think overall they're definitely putting in a lot of effort. I can that's that's for sure. I can definitely sense that. Definitely. And there's stuff that's working. Um, this grounded game did well in the past with 268 views compared to your sub count of just over 100. That's great. Um, you know, and you're playing a lot of different you know games with mods. I think that's really cool. Can you play raft without touching your raft? Um, you know, interesting concept. Uh, let me look at something real quick. Can you play raft without touching your raft? That was my spell raft at the end there. Okay, this is what I wanted to see because this this challenge seemed familiar to me. Oh, oh no, ten common mistakes. Can you beat raft without a raft? Should you play raft in survival? Don't put this many sails on your raft. See, dangerously funny is always doing stuff like this. So I guess, um, again, channel audit mode, when you find what, like when you find a video that goes like with an interesting scenario, like this person tried it, got 12,000 views. You did it with, with, I think a thumbnail that was just as good, just as clear two months ago, you got 208 views and yeah, you were earlier than them. 10,000 subscriber. Mm, interesting. I thought this, uh, I thought it was the opposite in any case, I, I think interesting challenge how can you continue to take it up a notch you know and i think i think interesting mods and things like that are definitely going to play to your favor that's going to help a lot um i guess the only other thing i'd worry about is just how many different games there's a lot of different games here that are kind of similar to one another like open world survival style games yeah, and you going back and forth between them too which is not really what you want to do yeah yeah it's 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 hard to like when you're when you're starting out this small, it's hard to get like really attached to you yet because it's like it always starts with the game. The game is the common interest between you and the audience. So I know I'm just full on in channel audit mode right now, uh, but one channel that popped up while we were looking just now at the, the different raft videos was Let's Game It Out, who is known for playing multiple games on their channel, but they're known for breaking the games like this is how they played raft this they made this crazy funnel <laughs> coming out from their raft um hey there's josh and when you go to the channel but you hey, search josh. by to sorry oh boy you search by oldest video this is how it all started right you had one game for a while with episode numbers like the classic thing but they stuck to one game for a while and then eventually one of the games they chose took off for them. And once the audience got to know them and their and the way they played that game, they were able to pivot to now today, they don't play the same game twice, at least not twice in a row. So this is this is how a YouTube journey can look for a channel with millions of subscribers. 
and it it just takes building up that rapport with an audience and uh yeah it's it went it went on like this for a very long time <laughs> Um, but now we're seeing videos in, you know, from three years ago, th this one got a few million views, like something's working at this point, like they, they change things up and, and things are starting to really take off. And like right about here, three years ago, they're, they're consistently getting like millions of views and playing different games throughout, but they they really took the time to build up an audience, but they're bouncing around. And I think, I think if you stick to one thing for a bit and build up some audience, build up some rapport and, and really the through line with this content is. I'm going to not just play the game. I'm going to break the game. I'm going to do whatever I can to make a mockery of this game. And you're kind of in the same boat. Like you're you're doing mods that make the game hey, really, really Welcome hard to, to play. So I, I think that's really, really interesting. And I think you should. Uh, I I'm getting, the, mod that uh, the, the sound makes me so distracted. I can't get my point. <laughs> um, we'll move on to the next channel. But my my the only point I was trying to make is that you should try playing one game for a bit and make something that that community is going to get really excited about. The No Man's Sky community is huge. Is there a mod? Is there something you can do that is going to get them excited for you? Can you, for a little while, be the No Man's Sky person that plays the game in this really unique way? And then you start to branch out to these other open world survival games. But right now, it doesn't feel like anything has a chance to help you grow the channel. It's just kind of like, I'm going to play this and I'm going to play that and I'm going to play this and, you know. So... Those would be some critiques there, but uh, I think there's a really a lot of really strong things on this channel too. Whew. I'm hitting the claw again. 82 on the non-gaming side. Oh, it's up 375 now. That's okay. The claw doesn't like to pick numbers on the earlier side of the form, so I will allow it. All right, this is Midnight Designs. Art, lifestyle, DIY. We're doing, it's another art channel that's doing uh, drawing shorts and getting uh, a lot of, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> what you got going on, Dad? <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, weird. Getting a lot of uh, views on some of these. We're, we're seeing 11,000 views here, 27,000 views here, 53,000 views here. Let's take a look at the latest one from 16 hours ago, and then maybe we'll, we'll look at this 53,000 one. Take a number. Oh, I'll mute it. Wait for it. Oh, that was epic. Oh, that's epic. Huh. It's pretty cool. It's a, it's a really good loop. Damn, that's epic. What are your thoughts? <laughs> I don't have much more to say. That transition was epic AF. Wow. I'm impressed. That That's cool. I wonder if, if this is the, the theme for the channel. You know, are all the shorts like this? Let's look at this one. Just won't. It, I think it's... I quite enjoy the life. Huh, foods I hate but everyone loves. Okay, that, that one didn't do none for me. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of reading. And one thing to note, depending on the device you're looking at, sometimes the title and stuff covers some of the captions. But it got fifty three thousand views. Obviously, it resonated with. Uh, obviously, it resonated with somebody. I think maybe it's because, it's. <laughs> what else? I'll say this. I think it's blasphemous. I think certain certain foods on this list are going to trigger people to keep watching. So, like, you know, they think caramel's too sweet. Fried chicken. They don't like. How do you not like fried chicken? You know, it it gets the audience like. You know what? How could you say that about my favorite thing? And. <laughs> That might be why this video is performing so well. Could be. Could be. I don't, from a drawing channel, I think that's a very interesting pivot. Um, this is the uh, Queen Elizabeth drawing. Okay. So it's, it's just music. So they draw a little bit, and then they do a transition, and the drawing's coming together more and more. Yeah, no, that wasn't good in the other one, but eh, not bad. Yeah, the, it's, a, it's a good strategy for looping. Yep. Okay. I want to look at this one because it has 11,000 views, and then we'll talk about it more. Every art tutorial. Step one, draw a heart. Step two, draw a stick. Step three, draw tape. 
add details. <laughs> so that was weird. It was like a you see one of the drawings and there was like heavily detailed after the tape. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting strategies being used here. What do you think? Any other thoughts there? No, I, I like the I like the 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 loop that they're using to uh, draw their pictures, and uh, they loop from one transition to the next, and the next page of the drawing. I like that. That that that's a good way to keep people to keep watching, especially if you do the looping and you're starting all over again and whatnot. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good strategy. Yeah, you you know what this this reminds me of somebody who is really in touch with the the type of videos that their audience would like, and what I mean by that is I think they're going out and they're watching a lot of shorts to help influence the decisions they make. So like, you know, every art tutorial I've ever seen, obviously that resonated with a lot of people. And you have probably had to watch a lot of art tutorials to, you know, form that opinion. So I think they're spending some time researching who it is their target audience is. Like maybe you and I are kind of scratching our heads over some of these, but obviously like they're, they're doing something right because they're, they're definitely hitting their target demographic. They know exactly who their target viewer is most likely. Yeah. These, these are legitimate short. When I was here two weeks ago, we critiqued the channel that we questioned whether the short were legitimate because they were so short. They did like four seconds short and they didn't really do much. I don't know if you remember what I'm talking about, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I like these better. These are legitimate, and these will definitely get people to keep watching. Yeah, the one we watched was their second most popular video. It was just from nine days ago, right. um, and then this one's their most popular one. It does. It also doesn't look like a drawing short. Get out of smile act clean. So I, I don't know if I can play the music, but they're. I'm getting better at telekinesis, so definitely not a drawing short at all. Um. And those two happen to be the best ones. And then it's a steep decline from these two to your drawing ones, which is that 30,000 is your best drawing short. So are there more, you know, are there more ways to kind of like play around with shorts so that you can see these types of views more often? Does it mean not drawing anymore? Or does it just mean drawing and doing, you know, even more extreme versions of the tricks and transitions? Like, for example, I don't know how you would pull this off, but imagine the coffee drawing we saw, right? So this one. What if instead of the camera just pushing into the picture and then zooming out and we see like this epic drawing of coffee, what if you poured coffee on the picture and when the coffee was done being poured on it, that revealed the mug? There's probably a, a way to do that with, with some editing tricks. And maybe that would be like a really interesting way to take it up to the next level. But with shorts, this is the kind of conversation I'd be having with with you and maybe anyone, you know, who can kind of, kind of help you set the stuff up or just bounce ideas off of people because I, I'd be looking to turn it up a notch. Like everybody does like the hand over the lens transition thing. Um, and it looks cool. I, I think like that shock value of, oh, wow, look how good that looks um, is definitely still there. But can you now crank that up a notch? And I, it, shorts is all about one upping yourself. I think that's my philosophy behind it anyway. Mm. So those midnight designs. Um, good luck to you. This is an yeah, awesome channel. Congrats on over a thousand subscribers. All right. We're going to need to update the claw now. I'm just going to put it up to 400. And we'll take a look at the next gaming channel. What's 310, right? Yep. Bean Bops. They play Minecraft and Roblox. Other videos. Oh, they're live right now. Uh oh. You know the rules. Oh, man. <sighs> oh, the live stream is offline. Well, I was, I was going to troll the live stream. How am I supposed to do that now? <laughs> zero out of 10 no <laughs> um channel audit wise i'd have a lot to say but we we've given a lot of audits yesterday and even today so um i want to look at what would be a normal video for you say goodbye to minecraft montage i it, like let's see minecraft farming with my friend that's a stream that's a video these are mostly streams and then there's some shorts 
and they haven't been around long. Okay, let's, thirteen let's days. Talk about, let's talk about their content strategy for a moment because this I don't I personally don't think this is the recipe for success on YouTube. You got live streams, which are quite long, two hour plus. You got short form content and you got long form content, which is let's extend it short. I don't think this is the good recipe for success on YouTube because you the, the length vary way too much. Um again, we were talking about earlier about uh having viewers being able to bond with you and latch on to you and your content because they know what to expect and they, they have an idea what they're going to get. Well, the same thing applies to length of content. If you're doing a short video one day and a two hour live in the next day, it is very difficult for a viewer to understand what you're trying to do with the creator and, and, and form that bond and attachment with you. So I personally don't like the strategy. I'm pretty sure there are creators out there that are doing it with success, but for newer creators that are just starting out, I do not think this is the correct way to go about doing it. Um, maybe Dan has another uh, perspective that he would like to offer. Though. I, I'd say yes and no. I'm I'm definitely doing this. Uh, like I, I I do all of this. I do live streams. I do long form short videos, meaning like just regular YouTube videos that happen to be short in length. And I do shorts. Um, but what I try not to do, at least especially like when I was first starting out, is swap between different topics. You know, I want I want consistency. So if somebody, the way I see it is if somebody sees your short and the goal is to get them to watch your streams and watch your long form videos, then they should feel like they're going to get a similar experience throughout all of the content they watch from you. If they enjoyed your short, there's a good chance they will enjoy the long form videos. They will enjoy the live streams provided they are similar. But Minecraft and Roblox, although they share a lot in common, they also, they also deviate from each other in one really big way. And that's Roblox is kind of a platform for all types of games within one game. So doors might not be, I don't know anything about doors, but it might not be enough like Minecraft to get a typical Minecraft audience to latch onto it. Uh, but seeing some of the numbers on the streams here, I would say doors obviously has uh, a, a, an audience, a following. And the fact that you intermix Minecraft streams, entire two hour Minecraft live streams, that is going to distract from what could be a very successful channel if they just cover one topic. I don't mind if it's going to be, personally, I don't mind if it's going to be live streams and shorts and, and long-form videos. It just, I think they need to appeal to that same viewer over and over again. And I think, the, the, given this channel is 13 days old, the views they're getting are insanely impressive. And I think they should pick their favorite thing out of the few things they've tried and just stick to it for a while because I think you'll grow way faster. You're already doing amazing. Like 13 days, 355 subscribers. Like I started to get a little bit like my eyebrows raised at this a little bit. Like what are the interactions in some of these? I mean, just look. No comments. It is a, it is a stream VOD. Let me go about halfway through this stream that got a ton of views. There's a lot of people in chat. So these are like legitimate. This person's like growing legitimately with the strategy. Um, I, I think they should really stick to doors to be perfectly honest. Um, let's, let's, we haven't done any video audit though for this whole time. Let's look at like, let's listen to some of this and and see if there's anything, any kind of advice. We're half, we're, we're, well, we're about 40 minutes into this two hour stream. There's still definitely advice we can give in terms of live streaming tips. So let's, let's hear it. Time out someone. How many views do you have left? Uh, 20. You just beat doors for the first time today. Yeah, same with me. Nice. Guys, don't spam, please, because I can moderate myself. But... So, a couple tips. Uh, one would be the people you're talking to are impossible to hear. Yeah. If it's okay to have other people in your call with you, you're playing a game with other people, so be sure that your audience can hear everybody that needs to be heard because there's a lot of you being quiet and everyone having to listen really carefully to see what someone's saying. Um, I think uh, one thing I noticed is you were talking about moderating your chat, asking people not to spam. Uh, it's good to do that every so often, but as a, as just a streaming tip, if you have moderators, like let them moderate. If you don't have moderators yet, try and find some folks you trust that are regulars and see if they're willing to be your moderators, talk to them uh, because you really don't want to be moderating while you're streaming. Uh, it's it's one of the reasons we don't interact with chat too much. The other reasons because we go off on a lot of tangents. And if we were also interacting with chat, it'd be really impossible to re review any channels. But 
it, as a streamer, it's good to kind of read chat and banter and, and interact with them. But if you're having to moderate and stream at the same time, it's going to it's going to lower the quality of your stream for the people who are behaving and are trying to enjoy the content. So try your best to get some moderators in there and let them do their thing, like and be strict. Don't if somebody comes into your stream and they're causing trouble, that means the the experience for you and the people watching is now being diminished by one person or one group of people. So don't be afraid to just kick people out of chat you know, who are misbehaving. Those are some of my stream tips for you. I got a question for you. Yeah. You see how they have that chat on the stream there on the left hand side? Yes. Why do streamers do that? I, I don't understand that because you obviously, mm -hmm. well, if you're on YouTube anyway, you have this whole chat box to the right here, but then you got streamers that put the literal chat in the stream too. Like, why? Uh, so I've seen this with so i used to think the same way and one person who i watch regularly made it make sense it was josh drive hayes they they stream on twitch a lot and they have a lot of different channels and one of them is like repurposing twitch clips and the fact that it's being pulled from twitch onto youtube is why they do that so mm -hmm. sometimes and a lot of times in josh's josh josh's content uh there's an interaction between them and chat and so chat being on the screen allows the editor to kind of zoom in on the particular message that like Josh is referring to. So it's kind of, it's done for like the future. It's not really done for the, for the benefit of the streamers, in my opinion. Now, if they're not going to repurpose this content as clips or anything, I am, I'm in agreement with you chats over here. You don't really need it on the screen either. This could also be in game chat and we're not, no, I think, no, these are the same names that are in both. Yeah. So Sometimes games have chat that are that, you know, so completely separate chats going on at the same time. But uh, yeah, that's that's why I think I would do that personally. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Um, one more thing I noticed about their live streaming habit is there. I'm noticing the BRB screen come up a lot. And uh, if you're going to do a two-hour stream, I would encourage you to take some breaks. Definitely stretch, use the bathroom, do whatever you need to do. Um, these, well, there's not many here. Oh, there's another one. These are more breaks than I would be as a streamer comfortable taking. I know that sounds really unhealthy. Do what works best for you. Just be aware that like the these breaks feel they're several minutes long. You do enough of these, the you know you you see that concurrent viewer diminish concurrent viewership diminish. I'm hesitant to actually give this as real advice just because everyone's different. Um, there could be a really good reason for these, but. Uh, I'm I'm wondering because there's like other people you're interacting with and stuff. Maybe in the background of your stream, there's a lot of chaos going on. And so I'm bringing it up in the sense that if you can have a little more control, so you're not taking as many breaks, assuming these are not breaks that your body needs to take <laughs> and they're just technical <laughs> breaks, try and figure out the technical side of your live stream. If your body needs to take the break, take the break. I don't care how many there are in that case. Um, but I just thought I'd bring it up because I noticed that BRB screen coming up uh, over and over again. Um, but yeah. Those are some tips. Channel audit, hat back on until we go to the next channel. Real quick, don't use the same thumbnail over and over and over again. Try to change up your live stream thumbnail at least a little bit. Like try and vary this thing. Uh, the game is called Doors, but it's like a character calmly sitting next to a fire. Like show, see if there's some kind of action or something you can kind of like do. Um, and then if you can add some stakes to the title, you know, like you're going to speed run. Th those are stakes. And I think that's one of the reasons this got so many views. Um, same here, like speed running. But Saying you're just playing with friends and subscribers is like, okay, but it's like to what end? So see if there's something like, are you going to try to get a hundred wins in a row or, or something like that? Add a little bit of like stakes to the title and the thumbnail. And, and that really helps with like for live streams, like audience interest. Okay. We haven't covered a lot of channels so far, but we've gone in depth on a lot of channels. And for that, I'm proud of us. Uh, I was trying to... 425. Okay. 67 on the non gaming form. So it's funny because I, I, you all, some of y'all think that we don't, uh, we don't interact with chat enough, but I'm always reading the chat on these live streams. And y'all, some of y'all are making fun of me because you think I'm here to just, uh, roast you all. I'm not, here, I'm not here to roast you. <laughs> I'm here to give you feedback. No, I am. You. Oh, damn it. But I'm no, not. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> I'm here to make you a better creator. Um, I'm here to keep people watching your video for as long as possible. That's what I'm here. Uh, so sometimes I might sound harsh, but I'm just trying to make you guys better creators in the long run. Uh, hopefully something I say on these live streams will resonate with you all and it'll help you 
become better creators, but I'm not here to roast you. That's, that's not a good use of my time or your time. I want to give you actionable feedback that you can take back and take into your editing rooms, your, 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 your recording studios, things that you can do to be better and keep people watching your videos longer. That's why I'm here. That is why I am here. Blech. I can talk right. All right, what we got here, Dan? So it is the nerdy Brit. Uh, they seem to be doing reactions to, I've never seen this before, stage plays. Um, let's see. Doctor Who predictions. Favorite Doctor Who episodes. So some of it's movies, some of it's plays, some of it's TV shows. Um, I guess all of these videos are a similar length. Uh, we can just look at the latest one and get an idea for how a typical video is for them. So you'll notice I'm not alone again. Guess what? Fraser Oliver Way. is in the building. Because what we're doing is we are continuing the lovely reaction to musicals I haven't reacted to before. First, what's kind of like the background of the musical? Uh, what what kind of information do we, the audience, need to know? Basically, it was a, so it was an official like Nickelodeon thing. So it's officially the SpongeBob people were like, should we do like a musical? Because it was I think it took a charity thing to start with. And then it went on Broadway and became this massive, like, oh, let's do it. All right, so 30 seconds in, we already have an idea of what the video is about. Uh, first thoughts. <laughs> what? Damn it. Man, I just got here to talk about how I'm not here to roast y'all, but here I am. Don't do it. Don't roast Man. them. Damn. There's too much chatter. Like, get into the video. Like, uh, all this back and forth banter. Like, there's way too much back and forth banter, man. Just get into the video. Like, we don't need all this, this banter going on. Get into the video. That, that, that's my advice. And get into the video, man. I I think where, where I was kind of like, oh, okay, was the very beginning when they're like, I'm not alone again. But this is the first time I'm seeing the channel. So, I, I don't necessarily need... And to know like that this person is not a regular on the channel. It doesn't make a difference to me because this is my first time here. So something to consider would be to maybe reveal that later in the video. Like um, maybe at the end, like, uh, by the way, John, I don't know if their name is John. By the way, John, will you be joining us in the next one? Then and, and you could have John say, I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. And that that is like a clue to even the new viewers that like, oh, OK, that person's not always here. But. I wouldn't have known the difference either way. And I think it just added to the intro unnecessarily. I, we, we have told you guys on multiple occasions that the first 30 seconds are critical to gaining that good retention on your video. This is not it. This is not going to help with retention at all. Just being, just being honest with you. What I noticed was, and, and you'll notice it. I'll just mute it for a second. You can see it. The camera is struggling right now. It It is doing... It's it's either autofocus or no, I think it's just autofocus. Like if you watch the edges of the screen and like kind of where the backs of their heads are a little bit, you can see it really easily. Like uh, the camera is kind of, you know, rapidly zooming in and out, trying to find its focus because there's two people there. And I think the reason that's happening is because of the middle. Um, there There's three easy points for the camera to focus on. There's person number one, thing in the middle and then person number two and all of these the camera could decide at any moment like oh I'll focus on this i'll focus on this i'll focus on this and i think that's what's happening here uh, the the autofocus is designed to kind of use the center of the camera and because the subjects are are way far away from the center it's like well i don't know what to do um in this case this is where i would either go into my camera settings and see what kind of autofocus options i have some cameras do it differently um or easier option, turn autofocus off. Because there's two of you, one person sits down in the middle and the other person adjusts the focus, looking at the monitor to make sure that, okay, my subject is in focus. Then you can both sit there at, at any point in that on that axis, right? Because you've, you've focused on that, that particular part of the frame and everything will stay just fine. It won't be jumpy. Um, but I, I noticed what I believe is autofocus is like jittering and it's very, very distracting to me. Yeah, you all really have to be careful, uh, careful about the camera and, and the jitteriness. Because, yeah, the, if it's distracting, if it's too distracting, uh, the viewer is gone. They're, they're leaving. There's moments where it looks like you're filming in an earthquake. It, it's just I don't know if the camera's shaking or if, you know, the autofocus is just struggling. Um, so I would definitely... Yeah, be aware of that. Let's get into 
the part of the video though where they start actually reacting to the play. You could watch this without watching the TV show SpongeBob because it goes through and says, "This is these characters. This is where they live. This is what they do." <laughs> Jump out of bed. So there's probably a lot of copyright issues here. <laughs> I'm a little bit worried about continuing. We'll we'll mute it for a second. I kind of want to see when they give their like reaction commentary. So there's definitely like some in the in the corners here. You can see. Okay, there we go. So they do stop and cut away and talk. They've trimmed it down to a good length. So. In terms of fair use, they're probably on the up and up. But with that much music, uh, I do worry that there is some copyright claim issues you might have. You know, and so you probably already having to deal with that. Um, I think you could avoid that by just cutting a little bit more out of the the content. You know, keep it more on on up and up and fair use. But I'm not a lawyer. This isn't legal advice. This is just what I might be thinking about if I'm bumping up against that. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's look at the outro. We haven't looked at an outro all day. I kind of want to see how they end the video. It looks like they, the play ends and they, they're giving their final thoughts. Let's look at the last few seconds here. Uh, they are there. There is one video that pops up on the screen. How do they throw to this? It's a bit childish, but it's 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 fun. If I was the target audience, they smashed it out yeah. of the park. Bright, wonderful sets. Throw all the glitter and lights and costume that you can at it. Hope it sticks. And... Have a good laugh, in it? What I will also say is, at the end of this, I'm going to... I hope you have a playlist I can link. I, is I'm going to put a playlist of him reacting to all of these, if you do anything. Okay, so they're throwing to a specific video, a specific playlist in this case. Uh, this is how we tell people to do it. Like, you, you tell us why you're going to throw to the next thing. Uh, I think that's great. Um, Viper, did you have any other things to add before we move on? Um, no, I we are good. Um, I am I am being told now, and uh, apparently we have been identified that uh, we are having issues on our back end with a VidIQ. So if you are having issues uh, getting into VidIQ things, just know that we are working on it. So yeah. Ah, yes, uh, that is a good note. I I did just when you said that, I just noticed we've had this wheel in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> running for quite some time so uh yeah that would explain that so yes if you are experiencing issues with the vidIQ software um that is why that's happening uh so the nerdy brit thank you for submitting your channel uh the last thing i'll say is that in terms of the title and uh, thumbnail for this video i i think one thing you could do to help increase viewership ar across your channel would be to maybe tease a little bit more of your opinion in the title and the thumbnail so if you have a negative or positive reaction like maybe it's a matter of is the spongebob musical the best musical ever um the best musical you haven't seen or something like that a more uh, try playing with more emotional titles while still keeping the words spongebob musical and maybe even reaction but i would say at this point it's obvious it's a reaction uh when you when you start to watch maybe you know maybe the thumbnail kind of covers that so I don't really need to know Re reacting isn't like a new concept to me. I think there's some room here for like a more emotional pull in your title, but all right, cool. Uh, why don't we, before we go to the next channel, share with you some really interesting news. There's a user by the name of I am Cav who's posted on discord and said, I find this awesome that I joined max and my channel just saw Great results based off the suggestions and changes I've made to titles and stuff. What we're seeing here is a graph that this user from VidIQ Max was kind enough to share with us, uh, where they have, just in this time period, which I think is the last 28 days, um, 18,000 views, uh, 331 hours of watch time, and 190 more subscribers. That is 154 more than usual for the channel. I know it's kind of hard to read because it's small. Um, they got 211 more hours than usual, and they got 14,000 more views than usual. And as you can see, that spike was coming up very quickly. Everything's turned around for them, and they're crediting vidIQ Max for the help. Basically, the advice that people are giving in the vidIQ Max Discord server, 
the advice they're getting from the countless sessions now that our coaches have done with users in there, they've been applying to their channel. They've been seeing some incredible results. This is a person who in probably just months from now is going to be able to take the first steps into calling their channel a business rather than a hobby. So I wanted to point this out as a way to very quickly plug VidIQ Max. Um, you get access to this very valuable Discord full of creators just like you at all stages of their journeys in the millions of subscribers to just even hundreds of subscribers. Um, there are people in the community who are always helping each other out. And of course, our coaches are in there as well, giving advice along the way, helping people to become more successful on YouTube. So if you're ready to take your channel to the next level, to take that next step and invest in your channel, bet on yourself, then vidIQ Max is here for you. The link is down below. There's a special offer running right now that will save you quite a bit on vidIQ Max. I'm just going to say you can get more details by clicking on the link below and applying that coupon code because every time I <laughs> try to break down the math, I always misspeak a little bit. It is a significant savings. It comes out to about... I would I want to say it's like $30 off a month all said yep. and done if you get this annual plan. But I I numbers confuse my small brain. So if you were to pay for a month to month, you would be paying $99 a month. But if you take advantage of paying annually and using the code, it will be around $69 a month. So like Dan said, you'll be saving 30 bucks a month by paying annually and using the code at the bottom of the screen. And just a note, it's not just VidIQ Max, it's also all of our tools that you can use on mobile, that you can use on, on Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. Uh, so it's a significant, significant value. Um, just for a little bit more than the cost of getting all of our tools, you get access to this huge program full of coaches and uh, you know tons and tons of valuable expertise. We've even had employees from YouTube now come into vidIQ Max and give their expertise as well and ask them, we, we've asked them questions that they've never answered anywhere else. and it's been incredible to see just how much people are benefiting from this program. So thank you for joining VidIQ Max to those of you who are in it. You are all amazing and good luck with your channels. And yeah, if you're interested, more info is down below. Mm -hmm. Indeed. All right. Uh, so we are 428, 389. Okay. Time to update the claw again to 440. Cover everybody. I believe a gaming channel is up next, 177. All right. Their focus is to make people happy. Just a quick note, by the way, this question here is always the most interesting to me. We ask what your channel focus is. They say to make people happy. What we're asking is like what if for if you're a gaming channel, like what game do you play or do you do tutorials? Do you do Let's Plays? Um, but it's always funny because a lot of people will just put to get monetized. We should probably reword that question. Isn't I like it. <laughs> This happens enough that we should probably reward, we consider rewarding it. <laughs> yeah. The focus should be on your audience. So this is not a wrong answer. There's no wrong answer unless it's just the opposite of what your channel is about. Like my channel is about Minecraft and you're playing Roblox. But, you know, it, when it's funny, we ask, what's your focus? <laughs> and they're like, money? <laughs> okay. It's Dubious Train 58. Um, so the answer I would have expected to see was like Minecraft, for example, because it looks like they're doing a lot of Minecraft content. Um, so Minecraft, but if I see a cow, the video ends. Uh, I play Bed Wars, but I needed help. Bed Wars, but my aggression takes over. Why don't we look at this one from two weeks ago? We had 180 views. Uh, they're just under 300 subscribers. Take a look. Minecraft, but if I see a cow, I will end the video. By the way, I saw this idea from J Rules. Making a non C cow video. Oh, okay, okay. I see how it is. You're stealing my ideas and then twisting them. Okay, let's name this world Obsidian Den because he's literally a cow. Okay, I've summoned into a variety of biomes. <gasps> There's a village! Let's actually get some wood first. So that's uh, a bit after the intro there, 27 seconds in. What are your thoughts? Okay, I have one main issue with this intro. Mm -hmm. This creator is doing everything right. I love the intro, but I have one main problem. Either your camera or your lighting is not doing you any justice at all. I don't know what's going on. Um, I don't know if it's the phone that you're using or 
the way that your light is hitting you, but you got to do something about your image quality because it is not helping you. I was going to give similar advice, but for the audio quality. Oh, it, it also the, the to me, the audio quality also needs to be improved. Minecraft. But if I see a cow, I will end the video. It it's very muffled. Yeah, I, but I think the image quality worked. In my opinion, I think the image quality worked in the audio and in particular instance. You're, you're not wrong. I mean, it's, <laughs> they're they're both in need of improvement. Um, I I think like the the advice we tend to give is audio first. If you can only improve one, uh, the audio being bad, uh, in our opinion, is more distracting. At least in my opinion, and Rob's opinion, is more distracting than the video being bad. People can forgive video if the audio is on point. I do. do you disagree? No, no, no. Okay Gen generally, I would agree, but for this instance, I, I, the audio is okay, and it's, for me, in, in this instance, the audio is fine, but that the image quality is killing me. Okay, okay. Idea from J Rules. Like in the it sounds better there. Yeah. I this idea from J Rules. Like it actually doesn't sound bad at all there, but it was the beginning that caught me. I heard it clip. No, but he's that. using audio that's from the guy out. though. Huh? He's using the audio from the guy that's on the screen though. Oh no, no, no. Uh, sorry. He was in a non C cow video. Oh, okay. That guy sounds great. Like when you when you compare yeah. the two of them ear to ear, like that that definitely sounds. By the way, better. I saw this idea from J Rules. Like in the non. But I'm noticing like when I saw this idea from J Rules, like when when it went down to J Rules, that's when the volume was appropriate. That's where it wasn't clipping and overmodulated. But yeah, when they when they talk loud, which is necessary for this type of content, like to get loud and excited, it the the mic was like you know you just you just hit that ceiling really really fast. So maybe it's a technique thing. Maybe the mic's okay. Maybe they just need to adjust some settings. Um, you're you're not wrong though. Like when compared to this person, especially the there's definitely a need here for some improvements. Um, but yes, pacing, uh, the story being told, everything that's all working really really well. I, I think you know kudos there for sure. Fun sound effects, a lot of jumping around, like a lot of lot of stuff going on. Ian Den, because he's literally a cow. A variety of... One thing, <laughs> I did this once. I did a video, a Minecraft video, where if something happens, the video ends. Um, one thing that happened to me, and I don't know if it happened to this person, is people clicked all the way to the end to see where the video ends. <laughs> so they didn't watch the video. They just skipped the middle bit. And so I had this like half pipe, this skateboard half pipe in my retention graph. Oh, Everyone wow. just jumping to the end to see how the video ended, and then they moved on with their day. Yeah, so one fun. one cautionary tale there with if something happens, the video ends. I if you notice that, and only if you notice that, like I would be playing around with different types of stakes that you can add. Um, maybe that would be a better format for a live stream. Like maybe you do a marathon of Minecraft challenges in one live stream. So if blank happens, the, 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 the quote unquote video ends, but basically the challenge ends. And then each one of those can be chunked out into fun clips or whatever, but just, just some brainstorming here on content ideas. Um, look at your retention graph. See if that happened to you. I'm tempted to see where the video ended myself, which is why I thought of this. So they did see a cow or cows. Well, Um, any other thoughts? I think we've given some pretty good advice there in terms of production quality. Yeah, I mean, even if you look at the thumbnail, the image quality of the thumbnails are great. We just need to translate that to the actual the actual video. It almost looks like a different person. Actually, can we watch another video? I want to see if it's the same or maybe in today's I video. I have played Bed Wars again, but I'm a noob and I don't know how to play this game. So I met a PvP master named Mr. Not Okay. And I've worked hard on this video. It took me one okay, minute. So before this video <laughs> starts, I want you to look the audio quality is way different. They're yeah. using like a totally different setup. It's at least clear now. Yeah, he. Uh, I think he's in the chat. He said he just got a new microphone. So I don't know what's going on with the okay. new microphone. Okay. Uh, if if you just got a new microphone, and you haven't gotten to use it yet. That's that's good to hear. If you just got a new microphone, and you're learning how to use it. That's totally understandable. Definitely watch some audio tutorials to see if you can get that in check because it sounds way different um and in a way that that's a little more pleasant to listen to because it's not like clipping or anything like that but it's okay when i got my microphone my, my this this one right here the first time i got it i had the same issue i didn't know what i was doing and i looked up a lot of tutorials i just kind of got everything straightened out and it took a long time to to get it to sound how i wanted it to sound 
Um, but cool. That's Dubious Train. A uh, lot of a lot of really really interesting stuff there. And uh, yeah, great to see. All right, we'll uh, we'll go to the next one. I can't find the claw now. I lost it for a second. Four oh five on the non gaming form. That's a very recent one where the the claw is being very generous to people who are actively submitting their channel. On the right form, that was the non gaming form. The name's Edgar or en Enger. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. Um, okay, I think it's is it a premiere chant? What did they say? Video editing. Okay, all right, it's a video editing channel. So, why don't we just look at the uh, latest one? These aren't very long in terms of editing tutorials, so that's interesting. So hey everyone, here's how to do the outline scale effect in Premiere Pro. So to get started, have your clip ready, I've got mine here. Firstly, you want to duplicate it, so I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard and then just click and drag it up and let go. Next up, head over to wherever you want the effect to start. So I want it to start around two keyframes ahead, so right here. Click on the stopwatch for scale, head it towards the end, just one keyframe back, so not at the end, right over here. And you want to set it to 150, so it's... All right. Uh, pretty interesting here. Interesting stuff for a Photoshop or Premiere tutorial. What are your thoughts? All right. So with these type of video where you're trying to teach somebody how to do something and you're inside of software, you all really need to learn how to make uh, use of the zoom function, um, especially for all of this stuff going on at the upper right. That that font is so small that it's literally impossible to see. And think about people that are watching this on a cell phone or, or a tablet. They really can't see that. So you really got to do the viewer a solid by zooming into the settings that you are toggling so we know exactly what to do as we follow you along. Yeah, it is. I They did zoom, but it is pretty small. Um, I know what it says because I use Premiere, so I, I have that context. But yeah, for a lot of people who are new, it's, it's really hard to see that you clicked on this button right here. So I think you could have zoomed in a bit more. That's the most I can knock them for. I think the audio is yeah. really good. I think it's only two minutes long and it's one simple trick that you can do in the software, which is great. I think videos like this can do really well. Yep. Um, one thing I want to do is search for, so this is, it's called outline scale effect. Outline effect. Okay. So, cause I, the term outline scale effect was one I hadn't heard before, but I, I don't claim to know all the effects and, and what they're called. Um, this one, outline effect plus shake plus scale tutorial. So I was just thinking about in terms of like the name, because when I, when I think outline, this is what I think, like they're outlining the character. Um, I'm also kind of interested in the fact that so many other channels are, are using anime characters in the thumbnail. Cause I was going to, I was going to say like, I thought at first this was an anime channel and the only reason I knew it was a premiere tutorial channel is because of the premiere logo in the corner of the videos. And I'm kind of wondering if, if that's also confusing to the audience, maybe not because they're searching for a very specific effect and you just happen to use for that one thumbnail, like an anime character um, on like from this perspective though, it just looked, it looked like an anime channel. Like we've seen in the past, yeah. like they're reviewing TV shows and stuff. Yeah. So like warp zoom out. Warp zoom out premiere. premiere. So that's theirs. And there's some other ones too. Like this is more what I would expect. Like or something like this. Yeah, like the way these are presented in terms of how their thumbnails are constructed a little bit more clear than this like you you did the effect on the text but the character looks unchanged so it's you know it stuff like that is a little bit yeah like it's competitive my my channel audit advice to you would be to do some thumbnail research just to, like on each individual tutorial you're going to do just to make sure that you're um you know staying competitive with with the thumbnails uh but this is for a couple of years and not a whole lot of videos, I'd say some really good progress, uh, some some decent views on these, especially like just the one from a day ago already has over 400 views and uh, you're approaching 2000 subscribers. So yeah, that's really cool. Um, in terms of their production value, I don't really have a lot of critiques so here. 
You can leave it as it is, but if you want to and have the beast fire, yeah, and now you'll be able good. to see that it kind of mm -hmm. glows around the edges. But uh, you like that zoom a little bit more. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. So yeah, peace. One piece of advice I guess we can give them is to just throw to another tutorial. Are there similar tutorials you, that you've done that someone who uses this effect might benefit from? Because that might be like, if you like this effect, you're going to really like to pair it with this one on the screen now, you know, and, and try and get people to click into another video. Um, that That's one piece of advice I can give you. But I think overall, yeah, zoom in a little bit more on, on the elements that you're showing people. Audio sounds great. Just, you know, and throw to more of your videos. All right, before we move on to the next video, I just want to answer a question that I saw in chat. Uh, somebody wanted me to talk about the uh, difference between vidIQ Pro and vidIQ Max. Uh, there's a world of difference. I mean, with vidIQ Pro, you still get access to most of our tools, although at a lesser volume than our other uh, tier. But the main thing with vidIQ Max is that you are you get into our group coaching uh, community. Uh, we got Jeff, Alexi, Travis. They all are in there. And also, we just since we just, uh, we just uh, partnered with video creators, now you have access to the video creator team, including Tim Schmoyer as well. So you got all of these people who have knowledge about YouTube and how to grow, helping you guys out, coaching you, answering your questions. Not to mention you you get access to an awesome uh, vidIQ Max Discord community there where you got a bunch of like-minded individuals all there to answer uh, each other's questions and help each other grow and critique each other. And it's just an amazing place. Uh, Dan and Rob are in that Discord at times. I'm in there at times. So... It's just a different vibe when you were rocking with vidIQ Map. It's, it's a lot more, it's a lot pricier than vidIQ Pro. But if you are in this to to be serious and build a business out of your channel, uh, it will not be money wasted. I can tell you that much. Yeah. So yeah, you get not only do you get everything you get with Pro, you actually get everything you get with Boost, which is our highest tier in terms of the tools, and then you get all the coaching benefits that you can see on this web page right now. Go to vidIQMax.com to dive into this a little bit deeper. Um, but yeah, uh, great question. All right. Uh, we're going to go to the next gaming channel on the forum here. 433, which is not where the gaming forum currently rests. So we'll just go to the person who submitted the latest. Oh, that was the tab I was going to use. Oh, well. Playhub, sports, tourism, and media. Is this a gaming channel? Let me look. Uh, it's FIFA. Okay. So we'll we'll take a a look here at these at their uh, intro. Hmm. Oh no! Oh no! 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 Is this one I do? Are you really? so I don't think there's any commentary. What are we, what are we doing here? But there is oh. some music and oh. uh, some gameplay footage. Oh boy, okay. All right. <sighs> what do you think? Okay, y'all. All right, gaming, gaming creators, listen to me very closely. Listen to Viper very closely. Nobody, and I mean nobody, wants to sit there and watch you go through menus, okay? I'll <laughs> just put it out there. Nobody wants to sit there and watch you go through menus. Where's the interaction? Where's the chat? Hell, if you don't want to chat, put some text on the screen and let us know what you're doing or what you're trying to do. But in this, we got nothing. We got the man screen, uh, going through menus and stuff. No, 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 no. no. What it, what is that? Like I don't understand. Like what, what is this? Is this like a is this like a video dump or repository dump? I'm guessing not since you're submitting your channel to grow. So I, I'm just letting you know since you are submitting your channel and you wanted to critique you, you, we need some more interaction from you as a creator in these intros and in this video as a whole. Not you just scrolling through menus and 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 just like we got to wonder what the hell is going on. Like what are we doing here? Yeah. The so they they have this um. Basically, this older version of the game, I think, got an update. There's a patch or something. These types of videos are great uh, to make, when, especially if you make them fast, like once the, the update is out. But I, uh, the difference between the ones I've seen that are successful and then this one is that there's always a host bringing you through the patch notes and telling you why this is important, why you should be excited about some of the otherwise obscure features 
that are patched into the game now. So we're kind of missing all of that context. We we did see the menus that you were going through at the beginning. Um, and there's a lot of like, okay, well, let's start playing the game now. You know, let's let's get into the meat of the content. For all we know, because I don't play this game, I don't know about you. Um, maybe this is part of the patch. Maybe there's some there's a reason we're scrolling through each character individually because now something's been added that we are not aware of. But a a person would be able to tell us, hey, look at all these cool stats we have on every player now. Like, let's pretend for a second that they added these stats here in the middle. Like, I would want the host to be doing some commentary. I want them to stop yeah. for a second and go. Okay, so here's what this is, and here's what this means, and here's now how we can choose players for our games a lot more effectively. And, you know, there's so many things you can say, you can give your opinion, and you can break things down. Otherwise, it feels like to me that I should just go to the website where these patch notes are listed and read through them myself. Exactly. I mean, if there's a point to all this menu scrolling and people and going from character to character, then tell me that. Don't just have me looking at you doing it and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. That, that, that. Again, I'll, I'll tell you guys like this. If the viewer has to do work, they're leaving your video, okay? With YouTube, we just want to relax and watch the content and learn and figure stuff out. If we have to do extra work to consume your content, we're not doing it. Nobody, nobody's doing that. We're not, we're not trying to work. That's your job as the creator. Your job as the creator is to put in the work to make the viewing experience as enjoyable as possible. If you make your viewer work, you will lose your viewer. Mark these words. Yeah, and, and the fact that it got as many views as it got from yesterday um, tells me that this is a topic that you jumped on at the right time. There's a need for this information, but I, I don't I don't feel like if I was looking for this information, I don't think I would stay on this video. It's I'm not getting much out of it. Um, I mean, we can look and see. I don't know anything about FIFA, so this does not help. But PES 2017. Uh, okay, here, let's see this autocomplete. This was from four days ago. PES 2017 new season patch. Let's see how this person did their video. It's a long intro they did. A very long intro. And I don't know if we can use that music. Updated graphic menu. Um, Let's go. I don't think we can play this music. So, we're still not getting any... If person lucky, we're not continuing their video. <laughs> yeah. You right now. <laughs> but they did put some text on the screen that said updated graphic menu. They gave us a reason for those being there. Maybe the FIFA community is just this. Maybe it's just music and gameplay. Maybe maybe we're wrong, Viper. Maybe maybe this is the whole thing. Going for goal. They've scored. I don't know. I thought we were going to prove an epic point. I thought there was going to be like the first video we click on was like commentary and, you know, oh, well, okay. So we have this new update. No one's explaining the update. Everything got to still stand, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> These certainly aren't for me. I'll tell you that. Like now I want to know what the heck this update is. Like I'm, I'm getting frustrated because if this was a game I actually played, I would be like, what? Tell me to say words. Yeah. It's just copyright music. With menus. So this is the channel we were looking at. That's PlayHub. I think the thing like the people in the chat agree, uh, some commentary would be definitely helpful. Yeah. So I'll give you that. In the space you're competing in, maybe you're doing the right thing. But I would argue that you could come out way ahead of these folks if you did the thing they're not willing to do. And that's give some context, put some voice over the video or hire a voiceover person to read your script for you. If you don't want to go on mic, that's totally fine too. But, but give people a little bit more uh, because I like, I don't know. I may, again, it helps to play the game because we don't play the game. It, you have to take our advice with a grain of salt here because maybe there's all the context is right in front of our faces and we don't see it because we're not familiar with the space like you are. But that's what we're hung up on right now is the the lack of interaction from from viewer or from host to audience. 
otherwise, hey, look at this. They're getting some excellent views, especially on their FIFA videos. Uh, when they stick to FIFA, they do well. When they talk about things like Grand Theft Auto 6 and 7 and all this other stuff, it's not doing so well. When they just do full league matches, not doing so well. But now that you're going into the more value-driven content, things are changing for you. You're starting to get more views. I say it'd be really cool to see you get one up on all the other per people in this space. And uh, I, I want I want you to set a comment goal. I want the comments on your video to be, oh my gosh, finally someone willing to tell me what's happening rather than just show me. Tell me and show me. That would be the comments I'd be aiming for if it were me. But again, you would know the space better. It's uh, But it, it, when you're coming to us for advice, that's that's where we're stuck right now. Um, all right, cool. We will go to the next channel, which is a non-gaming channel. 438. So let's see. No, we're at 464 now. Oof. These forms are getting filled out. Let's go to 475 on the form. Or on the claw. 247. All right. It's called Thor Unofficial. They do Marvel edits. We're just trying to get our live stream kicked off the internet, aren't you? This should be fun. <laughs> so we've seen Marvel edit channels before. Uh, basically, people take like clips from the movies and you know edit them in different ways. Very, very, very challenging for us to do video reviews on because we're not really sure what you're aiming for. Uh, I don't personally watch this type of content, so I don't know what it would generally look like. Um, so those are just some words of warning when submitting channels like this. For you, before you click on the video, can you go to the about page for me? Yeah. Just me, Thor. Here you will edit. Here you will edit a Thor and Marvel character. Have fun. Okay. All right. All right. So it's, oh, there's music, so I can't really play the sound. What is this? What? I can't even see anything. There we go. so all right i i guess it's a, a, a goals thing like channel goals here like what where do you hope for this content to like be you know uh are you just having fun like editing or but are you trying to like get the shorts fund going and you know what i mean um what are you thinking okay for the short we just watched the first like what 10 seconds were blurry af like what, what, what am i looking at like i feel like i need the glasses or something what are we doing here and then the watermark. I understand why y'all do it because you feel like people can steal your content, but you got to make it more subtle than what that was. That was plastered all across the bottom, and it's just not a good look. Like it's in you, the middle like, on this one. Yeah, like that. That's too big. You you got you got to make that smaller or figure out how to resize that so it doesn't get in the way of the content. Like I don't want to see. Your, I'm not there to watch your watermark. I'm there to watch the content. And when your watermark gets in the way, it, it it's just it's not a good look. It's just not. I hate to say this, but when you're using like Disney content, like Marvel, I don't even know if you should really be putting a watermark on it because it's not yours to begin with. <laughs> so True. it's kind of like I get that the edit that you did is yours, but I would argue that edits like this are not transformative enough for you to stay above board on fair use anyway. I'm not a lawyer, so I don't I can't say that definitively, um, but fair use is a defense, as we know from Emily Baker. It's not. You know, it's not like really a protection for you in terms of like, I could just say fair use and I'm clear. Like, no, fair use is what you say when you're dragged to court by Disney. So, I mean, the watermark it doesn't, you know, it, the, I get that it's there so people don't take it and put it on TikTok, for example, or something like that. But, you know, it, it, it does make it less pleasant to watch. And it's also less necessary because you're already sourcing content that is just not yours to begin with. Yep. Um, I don't know what to, what advice to give. Uh, I don't have much of an opinion on recuts of TV shows and movies. Um, if if you're catering to an audience and and you're getting some good views, which it seems like it's spiky at times, uh, then I would say keep doing what you're doing. If you're trying to get the spikiness to stop, uh, I think your edits need to be super super unique. I think you need to put things together that would never come together. You know, what if you edited Marvel and DC together in different ways, you know, like do some things that you couldn't get anywhere else. And I think that would make people stop the scroll. 
uh, when it comes to the short shelf. But yeah, that, other than that, like if it's just a couple, it, it's just a couple of clips from movies that that people have seen before, and it's it doesn't seem like they've been transformed enough. And sometimes, in some cases, games too, it doesn't feel like they've been transformed enough for for people to stop scrolling and for that content to ultimately go viral. So if you're inspired by channels that do edits like this, see what they're doing, take note of all the different things that they do, like a successful version of a more successful version of this channel and uh, learn from those. All right. There you go. I'm going to choose another non-gaming channel right now because I feel like we've spent extra time on gaming channels today even though we've seen the same amount of each 199. I feel like I, I tend to go off on more tangents with gaming channels. <laughs> that is my fault. All right. It's Tessie Vibes, and they are... It's a channel about all things Tesla. Okay. Let's take a look at their latest video from 45 minutes ago. Probably getting about a view a minute. Huh. So this is for using your devices in the car more comfortably. Writing. I hope that music's okay to play right now. Um, what are your thoughts? I like what's going on. Um, I'm just wondering how much longer it, are we going to go without hearing him talk about what that accessory is and what it does. I mean, I clear that you can use it to to put your laptop and other things on and use it in the car, but I'm wondering does it have any other functions? I see it has some cutouts over there, maybe for drink holders or something, but I don't know any of that because he hasn't said anything yet. So I'm just wondering is he going to talk at some point? Yeah, you do. You do product review style content, right? So like, uh, yeah, this is. I think edit wise, epic you know, in terms yep. of the way they shot it. But yep. yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I'm like, okay, but are we going to get walked through this at any point? So I'm going to lower the music a little bit. Just uh, just enough for me to hear when he might talk. Here we go. Hey guys, and welcome to the video. The great people over at Top Fit sent us over their beautiful foldable tray for the Tesla Model 3 and Tesla Model Y. Sorry, whenever I say Tesla Model Y, I always look back at my baby. So sexy. Anyway, I hands down believe that this will end up being probably one of my favorite accessories, especially on those road trips. Okay. So okay. again, a lot of edits, a lot of different scene changes here. That 30 second like B roll, cut that down to 15 and you're golden. That it was too long. That is uh the, I, I tend to agree. Yeah, it, it did feel it did feel like it did go and go and go. It was nice. It the was music nice. was nice. It was yep. it was a vibe for sure, but it definitely felt like I wanted to know about it more. You know, uh, I wanted to know how durable it is. Um, that that drink indent that we can even see a little bit in the thumbnail. Like, mm -hmm. how reliable is that really? <laughs> if the right. car is moving. Like, I feel like it's going to spill. I just I'm worried about it. So, can you calm my nerves about that a little bit? Or maybe you feel the same way. You've had the product for a bit. Like. I kind of want to get into all that stuff. And there was, there was, yeah, a lot of time spent just, just kind of chilling with this new product. Yeah. Again, it's like I told you guys earlier, you got to get right into the video. You have to, we say it over and over again, but you have to deliver on the click as you, as soon as humanly possible. Like you gotta, you gotta do that. Cause if you don't do that, you're going to lose the viewer. I appreciate the B roll of being a tech creator myself. I appreciate the B roll and the product shot and all that stuff. But 30 seconds of just product shot in the beginning of the video is way too long. Cut it in half, and you're good to go. Let's see how they end their uh, their videos here. Uh, we do have two different or three different options on the screen that pop up. Um, I always do that. Here, let me back up a little more. Okay. If you guys enjoy this content, make sure you guys bless that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Peace. So the host does leave us with a choice. Uh, we can choose this video this video or we could choose to subscribe did he just leave 18 seconds of nothing at the end of the video after he said see you next time oh bro you are not doing your retention any favors man yeah you get 
maximum 20 seconds for an end screen. That's as long as you can make an end screen before YouTube cuts you off. Like that's enough end screen, buddy. So you used most, if not all of it. And our tip for this uh, is to get out of the habit of using that. And before you end the video, before you part ways with the audience, you should say, if you like this, you should watch this. And it should always link to a one video, one, give people one choice, right? So there's no other, there's no other confusing options. This video is going to show you this other really cool Tesla product. People came to watch a product review for a Tesla. They're thinking about a road trip. They're looking for things that are going to help them. So think of the next logical video you can send them to after this one and, you know, give them a reason to watch. And that's going to keep your attention a lot, a lot less like this, <laughs> where it's just falling off at the end. And you're probably going to see that video get views from your end screens. You can look at this in your data and your analytics. It tells you, hey, this video is getting a percentage of its views from just end screens. And that's how you know it works. We've tested this on our channel. Uh, I've tested it on my individual channels. Like it, it's definitely a sound strategy. You will get more views and you will get session time. Basically, that means people come to your video and they decide to watch more than one in one sitting. That's a huge positive sign to YouTube, huge green light goes off and YouTube is going to make sure whether they subscribe or not, your videos when they release are showing up in that person's sub feed or that home feed or rather. So they log on to YouTube next time and boom, there's your next Tesla video right in front of their face because they watched more than one in one sitting. I'm just going to remind you guys that what you want to do is you do not want to warn the viewer that your video is about to end. Because as Dan said, if you do that, your retention is going to drop like uh, it's going to be like people jumping off a cliff. Pew, pew. As soon as the viewer knows the video is over with, they're gone. They're on to the next one. So the key is to end the video abruptly, but still end it in a way that it makes sense. Ideally, leading them to your next video, like Dan just said, with an end screen like that. So, yeah, those are our tips. Cannot give them one single tip in terms of like their production quality. The audio is good. The lighting is amazing. The shots are incredible. Uh, I love you. You put your car in a parking lot and you manage to have like three or four different sets in this video of you just kind of sitting um, in different areas, like standing in front of your car like this. It's great. Like, it's really, really nice. Excellent job. No doubt. All right. Uh, now we will go to the next gaming channel. The gaming form is at 300, 435 responses. We're more than covered with the claw, which will go to 398. Uh, with a five at the end for some reason. Damien the Funny. Brawl Stars gaming videos. Uh, oh, and they left a quick note. My featured video is my best video. So I think they want us to look at their featured video on their channel. See this one. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm just going to make it larger. Uh, how do you click into this thing? I never click on feature videos. Uh oh, and y'all think I'm bad? Dan about to roast in the middle, y'all. What? Dan is about to roast. <laughs> oh, I see it now. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a tip for you that's going to make your next video your new best video. Open your wallet, find your credit card, and please pay Kind Master some money to take that logo off of your videos. Or ask somebody nicely who has a credit card to help you with that. Please, please, or use DaVinci Resolve. It's a free editing software. It's fantastic. Um, we don't want this because your competition has bought their editing software or is using editing software that they have access to that doesn't force them to put a watermark on their videos. Um, it's it's the it's the mark of a novice is what that is. So that's that's why Viper said I was going to roast you. It it does make my eyes kind of twitch and my, my neck pop. And yeah, please get rid of that at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, so 200 views. Uh, you posted it very recently when Brawl Stars gives you power cubes. We didn't hear any commentary. 
uh, we we've seen a Brawl Stars channel today, actually, that and there were there, you know, there was somebody kind of commentating. They had a really, really strong intro, a strong hook. Um, yours was just kind of like music and, and scenes kind of flying by. And it was really hard to like figure out what I was going to see. Like when people click on on this thumbnail and this title, uh, is it is that click being paid off at the beginning? So without hearing the music, there is something happening because I don't know Brawl Stars too well, I guess. Okay, so they did collect a, uh, a power cube. But I would have liked to see the camera zoom in, like it did there. I would have liked to see the camera zoom in on the power cube since that's like the subject of the video, right? Um, I I think for gaming content like this, with games like Brawl Stars that are just super accessible, you know, millions of people playing them, you really got to like, you know, you want to get ahead of the competition, but you you also need to like meet them where they are too. And that means it's time to get a microphone or a host for your channel, meaning like you write scripts and you send them to a voiceover artist. Uh, you can do either, but I, I think it's time to form that connection with your audience. We're all about that here at vidIQ. We're all about having people build bonds and relationships with their audience because we know that's how you grow a strong community. We know that the best YouTube business owners out there have built a strong community and to build that there needs to be somebody there to latch on to. It's really hard to build a community around you as a creator if you are not actually physically present in some way in your video. So that's why all day we've been like harping on about this with all, not all, but a lot of the gaming channels we've seen today that don't have voiceovers and we just keep hammering this point. We're like, please put, you know, get a microphone, like put yourself in your video. It's so important. It's YouTube, you know, it's about you. It's like, be in the video star in your video it's the it's really it makes such a difference it's what separates you from every other creator who has brawl stars and just plays music behind it and puts gameplay footage on the screen anybody can do that but nobody else is you and that's why we want you to put your put you in your videos it doesn't have to be on camera if you don't want it to be i've seen many successful gaming creators I've never seen their actual faces. I've seen their channels, though. They have millions of subscribers. You, you, I'm sure some come to mind right now. That's my speech. I can't talk about it anymore. I can't do it because whew, we've said it. We've said it a hundred times today. Get you a microphone. What final thoughts? So apparently, according to somebody in the chat, it doesn't need commentary because it's a meme video. Um, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> I, um, how the hell do we know it's a meme video? Or how does how does a, a normal viewer know it's a meme video? I mean, mm -hmm. people in, in the know might know it's a meme video, but Viper didn't know it's a meme video. Dan doesn't know it's a meme video. There's no way for us to know that unless there's some type of commentary. So you you again, I, I will go back to what I said like 15 minutes ago. If you make your viewer do extra work, you lost the viewer. Three minutes is a long time for a, a joke to play out. It's a lot like I feel like, yes, it can be a joke, but it, it's it the intro, I guess the reason. So I guess I can agree with that. I've I've certainly released videos without commentary, but I, I in my edit make it super, super clear that this is like a joke, you know, and you don't need my commentary because the video speaks for itself. This video, in my opinion, does not speak for itself. Maybe as a Brawl Stars fan, you might disagree. I but like I'm left lost. There's just some music. There, there's a power cube that falls on the ground and then nothing happens. Then the video turns black and then the video starts. It starts just like any other gaming YouTube video where there's a, an intro with a hook and then we get into the meat of the video. But again, at no point is there a commentator. It doesn't, it doesn't do enough of a good job to tell me, no, this is a comedy moment. You don't really need it. We need more sound effects. We need more music. We need more context. And you can certainly do that without speaking into a microphone. But it's even harder. You have to work really hard to make sure that anyone who clicks on the video gets it instantly. They don't have to think about it. My first thought is, where's the person? Where's the host? Don't give me time to think about that. Be so good at editing that I can't think about that because I'm already into the joke. I'm already into the, the meat of what's going on. I mean, even PewDiePie tells us it's a meme review and he doesn't even have to. He's PewDiePie. <laughs> yeah. So that's a fair point. Like if, if that's what it is, but it didn't, it didn't signal that to us. And that's the problem. Yep. But all right, cool. We did it. Two hours. Video reviews. Done. We've seen so many channels. If yours was not one of them, I do hope that you were taking notes. I hope that you found some of this helpful and useful. 
Um, Tuesdays, channel audits, Wednesdays, video reviews. We got videos coming out all the time. I think Friday will be our next upload. Um, catch and Viper on Tube Talk. Yeah, I'll be, uh, Tube Talk. New episode will be out tomorrow morning. Uh, and on Tuesday afternoon, on Thursday afternoons on Twitter, I do thumbnail audit. So uh, if you want a chance to have your thumbnails audited, uh, make sure you catch us on Twitter on Thursday afternoon. Excellent. Cool. There you go. Lots of opportunity for feedback. Even more if you're in VidIQ Max. Um, all right, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe. We will uh, find the outro screen and catch you later.